let's quickly go over what's really new in this lecture. Previously, we learned how to construct energy interaction diagrams and how to summarize them with an equation for the conservation of energy in the particular system we are looking at. The energy conservation equations have a term for each energy system that changed. We can take things to a more quantitative level if we know how to express the energy changes in terms of their indicators. If we measure the indicators, this allows us to calculate the corresponding energy changes. Then we can also calculate a missing piece of information. The two types of energy change that were covered quickly here were thermal and bond energies. We'll come back to kinetic and potential energies in later lectures. The change in thermal energy is equal to the change in temperature times the heat capacity per unit mass times the mass. This makes sense since the more the temperature changes, the more the energy changes, and it takes more energy to heat up a larger mass. Each substance can have its own heat capacity since some things take less energy to heat up than others. For phase changes and chemical changes, the change in bond energy grows with the change in enthalpy per unit mass times the mass that underwent the phase or chemical change. You may not have heard of enthalpy before, but you might have heard it called the heat of vaporization or the heat of melting in those special cases. Sometimes it is more convenient to give the change in enthalpy per mole instead of per unit mass. In that case, we need to multiply by the number of moles that underwent the phase or chemical change instead of multiplying by the mass. Each type of phase change or chemical reaction can have its own value for the change in enthalpy. There is a handy table of values of heat capacities and enthalpies in your DL manual just before the first DL. If all else fails, you can look them up on Google. The sign convention for thermal energy changes is very simple. If the temperature goes up, then delta T is positive and the change in thermal energy is positive. If the temperature goes down, then delta T is negative and the change in thermal energy is negative. The sign convention for the change in bond energy is a little more confusing. For example, when we melt ice, some people might take the amount of liquid water as the indicator. That's what I do. But other people might take the amount of solid ice as the indicator, and their delta M would be the negative of my delta M. Also, the change in enthalpy is positive when we melt ice to liquid water and negative when we freeze liquid water to ice. To get around all this confusion, we will write the formula with absolute values around the change in mass and the change in enthalpy, and then put a plus or minus sign out front, depending on whether the bond energy is increasing or decreasing. When we're going from a low temperature phase to a high temperature phase, like solid to liquid, we're adding energy to break bonds, so the bond energy is going up. Similarly, for chemical reactions, when we add energy to break chemical bonds, the bond energy goes up. And when we, new bonds are formed, bond energy goes down. Let's see how this works in a simple example, like the one in the lecture, with one kilogram of hot iron and a half kilogram of ice. Suppose the ice is at 273 Kelvin, and we put it with the hot iron in an insulated container, and find that after they reach thermal equilibrium, they are both at 273 Kelvin, and all the ice is melted. Can we find the initial temperature of the iron? In this case, our physical system is 1 kilogram of iron and 0.5 kilograms of ice. At the beginning, when we put them in the insulated container, the ice is at 273 Kelvin, and the iron is at a hotter temperature. At the end, everything is at 273 Kelvin, and all the ice is melted to liquid water. Since they are in an insulated container, this is a closed system, so we draw a solid line around everything. There are two energy systems that are changing, the thermal energy of the iron and the bond energy of the ice. We know that the initial amount of water was zero kilograms and the final amount was half a kilogram. We also know that the final temperature of the iron is 273 Kelvin, which is below its initial temperature. So the temperature and thermal energy of the iron are going down and the bond energy of the water is going up since the amount of liquid is increasing. The equation for conservation of energy is that the change in thermal energy of the iron plus the change in bond energy of the ice add up to zero. Going further, we know that the change in thermal energy is the mass of the iron times its specific heat times its change in temperature, delta T. We also know that the change in bond energy is the absolute value of the change in the mass of the water times the change in enthalpy per unit mass. So we can simply solve for the change in temperature, delta T. In the DL workbook, we find that the specific change in enthalpy for melting ice is 333.5 kilojoules per kilogram, and the specific heat capacity of iron is 0.449 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Notice that all the units cancel except for 1 over Kelvin in the denominator, 
so our final answer is in Kelvin. And we find a change in temperature of minus 371 Kelvin, which means the initial temperature was 644 Kelvin.